42nd annual Brookville Community Picnic. I'm Pam Hall and I represent the Brookville Chamber of Commerce. We are honored, thrilled, excited to have a very special guest with us today. May, may God bless our president for taking time out of his busy schedule to visit our little corner of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce to you the President of the United States of America, George Bush. Thank you. I'm so happy you're here. I'm very pleased to be here. Now don't go away. Or do you have to? <laughs> oh, no. Go down. Oh, you do know. You can do what you want. Thank you very, very much. What a Thank you, sir. Thank you all very, very much. Thank you very, very much. Hey, listen. Thanks for that warm Brookful welcome. And thanks for inviting me to this great picnic. And my thanks to the Brookville High School Band pressed into service, out of school, but playing well. And may I salute Ohio's governor, Governor Voinovich, an old friend doing a great job for this state. And our Lieutenant Governor, Mike DeWine, an old friend of mine and a barber he and his friend. We want to see him win this year. And Mayor Duncan, may I thank you, sir, and your wonderful family for making us feel so welcome and salute all the present and future legislators. I see a sign back here that I agree with. Let's change the United States control of the United States Congress. Let's change that Congress.
And may I salute the man I just threw a horseshoe with, Cloyce Copley, 97 years old. Boy, I hope I'm like that when I'm 97, and I bet the rest of you do too. Let me just start by a comment about the world that we live in, and particularly seeing these children here. We have changed, literally, since I have become president, we have changed the world, and now we want to use that leadership to make things better in the United States of America. Just think of it. The Soviet Union and Soviet communism are no more. The the Berlin Wall is down. Ancient enemies are talking to each other in the Middle East, and we're going to move peace forward in that area. Democracy is on the move in Latin America, and these young kids go to sleep at night without the same fear of nuclear weapons that their parents had. And that is fantastic for the United States of America. And it's a new world, and it's a fantastic challenge in it. And when we kicked, and all with the help of many young men and women here, kicked Saddam Hussein out of Kuwait, we said aggression will not stand. And that is an important principle. And so you, you couldn't hear it, tell it from listening to the Dem Democratic uh, Convention, which I was spared because I was fishing in Wyoming. But I. <laughs> But I might say foreign affairs and the national security of this country are still important. We still don't know what's going to crop up in the terrorist field or, the op or the, some unpredictable enemy. And I, as long as I am president, I will keep the United States of America strong and number one. We cannot forget that. And so the question now comes, with the help of the American people, we have changed the world. It is a more peaceful world. And now let us take that involvement with the world to make us the most competitive nation on the face of the earth. Let's change things. And that's why I am running for re-election. We've changed the world. Now help me change America for the better. Education. Education, winning the battle against drugs, driving criminals out of our communities. We can do it if we pull together. But I think it's particularly appropriate here at this marvelous community celebration to think about another threat. Another threat facing us, more dangerous than a missile. And I'm talking about the breakdown of the American family. Here today, we see it strong, and I want to protect it and help strengthen it. The opposition would have you believe that family values is merely a slogan, and I don't look at it that way at all. I don't believe that. You describe a world. Here's what, here's what Ruth Dittmer Ream of Brookville said. Here's her poem. Describe a world short on hope where there is so much pain. How can we mend the golden thread to weave our dreams again? We can mend that thread, but we have got to find ways to strengthen the traditional American family. You see, I have a different approach than the opponents. I believe the family can do things that no government program can do. Let's take a look at Brookville and share it with the rest of this great country of ours. Where would you find a government program that would guarantee that Brookville High School would have a 95% attendance record? Government cannot do that. Family can. Where would you find a government program that motivates six of your best and brightest to earn perfect grade scores, and the class of 92, right here in Brookville, to earn a more than a quarter of a million dollars in college scholarships. Now, government cannot do that, but the family can if they help those kids.
Let me give you an example. Where would you find a government program to teach and shape a good, solid young man like Derek Brown who can become a national merit scholar? Government alone can't. They can help, but they cannot do it. And his family can. Your families can. And so let the other side ridicule family values. I'm talking about work, responsibility, loving thy neighbor, respect for the creator. Family teaches us right from wrong and discipline, and it teaches us kindness too. And so let me tell you how I want to see the government help in strengthening the tradition American families. Here we are. It's expensive to raise a family today. I believe the government can help her ease that burden. And yesterday I saw a law expanding financial aid, signed a law expanding financial aid to students young and old, not just the poor, but also the middle class who are desperately strapped by economic times. We did this so that your son and daughter can go to college and chase a dream and parents who want to go back to college and finish the degree, even if it has to be one course at a time. You all deserve our support, and this legislation will help give you that support. Let me tell you another area. What about the young children of working parents who need quality daycare? I have fought for an important new effort to help assist the working parents and I stood for principle against those who said that only government-sponsored daycare will do. It will not. And I asked, what's wrong with daycare in an aunt's house or even in a church? And today, I am pleased to announce that we are issuing the first regulations implementing historic child care legislation guaranteeing that parents who get federal help in paying for child care will get the kind of care they choose. It is not the government to tell them. You see, it is my belief that the fathers and mothers know best how to care for these kids and should have a choice in how child care works when it comes to the kids. And I also believe that same principle of choice ought to apply to our schools. When I got out of the service, they had the GI Bill, and it didn't say what school you had to go to. It said you could go to anyone, religious, private, or public school. And I now have the GI Bill for children that permits just that, giving the parents choice in where their kids go to school. And there are other ideas. This economy has been sluggish. I have had incentives to get this economy moving in the Congress, thinking those same old thoughts, refuse to think new ones. I'd like to see a $5,000 tax credit to help young families share in the American dream and buy their first home and get the Congress to pass that. I want the families to be able to use their IRAs without penalty for unexpected health care costs. Get the Congress to get off its... Get the job done. We know that in recent years, the number of single parent families have exploded. Half the kids in single parent homes live in poverty, five times the rate of others. Well, the Berlin Wall crumbled. Russian troop to the polls, the polls opened a new stock exchange, and we got all these things going, but we need to help these children and help these families, and that's what this program is all about. And one last point, and then we'll let you get back to having some fun. One last point. When I talk about change, Take a look at the insta one institution that has not changed in the last few years. Presidents have come and go, different parties have come and gone, but look at the United States Congress. One party has controlled the House of Representatives for 36 years and the result, they can't run a little tiny post office and they can't do anything but screw up a bank.
And so if you want to get done what I know you do, get in this balanced budget amendment, if you want that line item veto, if you want to help, if you want to help me move this economy forward, change the control of the United States Congress. And there's another point. My t terms of presidents are limited. What's wrong with limiting the terms of some of these old geezers that have been there forever? Let that new ticket talk about change and I'll lay my record up against them any single day for constructive change for the United States. We have changed the world now help me constructively change the United States of America. Thank you all, and God bless you. Thank you very much. Mr. President, Mr. President, Tuesday night I had the great honor at our council meeting to proclaim July 24th, 1992 as President George Bush Day in Brookville, Ohio. And I'd like to give you this proclamation. Thanks, Mayor. And in commemoration of this day, this great day for Brookville, Ohio, I would like to ask you to help plant this sugar maple tree. We'll do it. Where's I got to hand this off to somebody? Here, hold that thing for me, will you? Here we go. There we go. Barbara's giving a speech in Boston somewhere. Darn it all, she missed out on the best event. <laughs> hey, you, hey. Thank you, and thank you for coming to our city. Thank you all very much. What a great day. Now get out to those polls and go to work in November. Thank you.